when it's a home week, like there's some extra juice when you get to the office for sure. And just knowing that like you have to make the most out of your time every single day to learn as much as you can about whoever Liberty's playing. The Flames are finally back home on the mountain and it's homecoming. Right. Gardner Webb is coming to town and LU is only one victory away from being bowl eligible. I think our podcast is great because it, it helps you kind of digest what you saw. Maybe you get some other opinions from, from Joe or Emily that, that maybe you didn't think about. And then yes, you start spinning it forward then. Okay, so what do we expect moving forward? And I found the more you start talking through these things, just the more you kind of get a better grasp of it and you remember it better. And the podcast kind of helps us do that and helps us get ready and get primed for the game ahead on Saturday. Talking to the coaches is huge. You know, we got to make good throws and run good routes and all of that. Uh, they're well coached. <clears throat> they're in the right spot and play extremely hard. You know, you watch them against Coastal and you get really scared. We, we got to play well. We got to earn the right to be bow eligible. You got to earn it against whoever you play. Thanks, Sorry, y'all have to catch me right after Wednesday practice. <laughs> That's all good. Right. That's all, all right. good. Yeah. All right. I see you. Uh, one of the keys to producing a football game for the ESPN family and networks is to be non-biased. So it's really important to not only know the storylines from Liberty, but to also know the storylines from the away team. So without that coach's call, it'd be really tough just to read articles and know the makeup and the character of the team. You learn a lot about the program through the interactions you have with the coach. It's different than just reading uh, a quote in a newspaper article after the game. You kind of get a real sense of what they're, what they're about. And then you're able to ask really pointed questions as well. Like, What would you say is um, the culture of this team or what are you guys working towards? Um, I think sure. we, we have a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of belief. So for what I do for football, it's essentially setting up technically, making sure the cameras work, making sure that the audio works, the graphics gets built for everything on the Saturday show. Tape, builds, highlights, similar to a football team. On a football team, they're gonna have walkthroughs on Friday. They're gonna have final preparation on Friday. So Saturday, all they have to do is play the game. For us, all we'll have to do is broadcast the game on Saturday. Once we get to that zero point and it's time for us to air. Nine. Everything kind of just slows down. Six, five, four, three, two. Showtime. Before a game, I almost have to kind of take a couple deep breaths and just calm myself down. Not so much because of the nerves of doing this, but more so just the excitement that I get to call, I get to call a football game today. And with that, we welcome you up into our booth high above William Stadium alongside Joe Yock. I'm Matt Warner. In a broadcast environment, regardless of what your role or your position is, it's always chaos. Ready, six. Take six. Here we go, Matt Warner. Like I always like to say, there's nothing better than the smell of freshly cut field turf on a fall afternoon. And so if people that don't understand what broadcast is peeks into the control room, they're always like, that is chaos. I don't know how you know what's going on. Ready, seven. Yes. Third and long, pressure comes. Down he goes! Ready, six, take Dennis six. Dennis Osagade like he was shot out of a cannon. Go, go to red, red to blue. Goal, goal. Roll, set red. The football, you have a lot of guys on the field, so it is a lot to keep track of. So uh, I have a spotter, and so he stands between myself and Joe, and I have my charts with the offense on one side, defense on the other, and my spotter, Jason, he actually helps kind of identify things that are maybe hard to see or, or I might miss. Play action, rolling, looking, firing towards the end zone, and it's caught! Touchdown, Liberty, the tight end, Jerome Jackson on the reception. Ready two, take two. Ready one, take one. Ready six. Yeah, well-designed play. Get a little motion in here, up here, work the back of the end zone. You want to go to the back out in the flat, but you'll see a slow play by the backside tight end, and then it'll work here. Jonathan Bennett does a good job of dropping back here and then looking for the back in the flat, and then ends up coming across the tight end on the crossing route. What Emily can see on the sideline is stuff that we can't. So she is really the eyes for us a lot of times down on the field for a lot of those little things that are really important, and she provides something that neither Joe or I can from, from the seat that we're in. You never know what you're gonna see. You may see a play that you have never seen before in your life. Doesn't see it develop, now throws back across his body! Somehow Hunter catches it! Cross the 20! Cuts it up in the 10! Makes another man miss! Driving inside the five! First down, 
empty backfield. Pressure up the middle. Fisher avoids it, loads up, throws down, field is picked! Dejon Anthony jumps the route, and that may seal it for the Flames. To stay reactions, cue up Y and Take one, silver. ready two. Take two, ready five. Take five, ready four. All season long, the Liberty defense has carried this group, and they do it in the biggest moment today. Sometimes, Matt Warner, you just have to find a way. Liberty's gotten a five and one with some duct tape, some bailing <laughs> twine, yeah. and a whole lot of grit, and that's how they got their sixth win here today. It was far from pretty, it was far Six, from easy, five, but they just did four, enough. Three, two, one. Down to black.